cool. Well, um, yeah, let's get started. Hey, I'm Josh uh, Devrel at Near Protocol. We are here doing our last community meeting of the month, uh, but not the least. Um, we're really excited about Near Indexers and the data platform team that's going to be kind of doing a presentation for us and yeah, answering any questions that anybody has on uh, all things data when it comes to Near Protocol. Um, so yeah, uh, go ahead and do an introduction. I'll start out with uh, Tiffany. Yep. Uh, hey guys, I'm Tiffany. Uh, I am the product manager for data platform team at Near Protocol, um, and I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'll pass it to Fro. Cool. Yeah. Hey everybody. Um, I'm today. I'm as a. I'm, I'm with uh, with you guys in a, in the role of data platform team leader. Uh, you may have seen me a few weeks ago on Explorer team as well. So as you can see, I'm jumping around, uh, trying to be everywhere. Uh, and Josh is uh, definitely uh, even more than that. I'm <laughs> so uh, happy to see everybody here and uh, hope you enjoy today's call. I'll pass it to Bogdan. Uh Hey everyone, yeah, I'm Bahdan. Uh, I'm working at data platform team, mostly working on indexers, so like, and docs and everything indexer related. So uh, I'm passing it to Olga. We will uh, like introduce ourselves more during the presentations I have. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Olga. I'm data engineer here at Near. So welcome everyone. Awesome. Go, go team. Uh, yeah, just if you haven't uh, attended one of these sessions before, so at the very bottom of your screen, you can see that there's Q&A section. Um, there's also the chat. So feel free to post anything in chat. Um, if you have like a specific question, fire off a question at any time during the presentation. And yeah, we want this to be more of an interactive um, session with getting community feedback. And that's ultimately uh, why we are having these is to get feedback from our community, help us shape how we build things, what we prioritize, what's most important to you and help clarify any questions um, that you have about any of the tools or features um, on the platform. So yeah, at any time, go ahead, fill out a, a question in the bottom and we will answer it as we go. Um, and with that, I'll pass it off to Tiffany to start the presentation. Sounds good. Can you all see, see my screen? All good. At least we can. Yep. Sounds good. Yep. Um, so we'll kick off with a team objective for, for the data platform team. Uh, and we have top three objectives here. Uh, first one is we want to make near the most accessible blockchain for web to developer. We're very aligned with the tool team on this front because you know we interact with um, developers, our all of our products interact with developers to use it on a, on you know a very frequent basis. So we definitely want to make that experience as much as easy as possible for you know anyone to onboard to use it. Um, the second one is enable product based decision making for data platform products. Um, and this really speaks to, we really want to get as much of the feedbacks and you know, engagement with our community as possible to really build the products that our community love and like and needs. And the last one is power on your project with stable, accurate, and um, extensible data infrastructure. So um, really want to maintain our quality for our products and really deliver the, you know, the best the accurate, the ones that are going to be used for all kinds of cases and uh, for our project. And, you know, no matter where you are, no matter what you, what you do, um, we really want to empower that for all our developers out there. And from there, I'll pass to Bogdan for an uh, introduction of the history of Indexer. Yeah, thank you. Can you open my slide? <laughs> the next one, I guess. Sorry, it's not really sharing. Uh, yeah, it's sharing, but it's not like switching. <laughs> we, we can see it on the team objective currently. Um, let me do a reshare. Yeah, let's try. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, like a little introduction. Like uh, I'm here to tell like a cool story about like the entire history of Indexer, uh, what it is, how it like was actually invented i would say uh yeah but we can't see the screen unfortunately oh well. like 
I can try. You have the slides as well? Yeah, yeah I can. I can cool. try. I cool, can awesome. try it. Yeah, give me a second. Can you Perfect. see it? Yep. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Right how to start it? Do you know? Oh, okay. Slideshow. Yep. Oh yeah. Nope, uh, nope. yep. The the button to the right. Uh, slideshow. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. There I you can, go. I Perfect. couldn't see it. Like. Yeah. <laughs> no okay. worries. So cool, cool. yeah, let, let's start. Uh, the history of Indexer, like it has begun in the year 2000. Uh, I call this year as a near uh, Stone Age because at this moment, near has only JSON RPC and everything like, and nothing else. Uh, at this point, uh, the Project Explorer, we all, like I hope everyone is like uh, seeing and using it. Uh, the Explorer was the most like the only consumer of near data at that moment, which uh, like showed everything to people. And at that moment, uh, Thrall, as like an inventor of Explorer, uh, created a pool model, so-called pool model. So Explorer was like asking JSON RPC every second for a new block and trying to save this into the like internal database uh, for f further like show up uh, in the Explorer pages. Uh, it was like, a, like, it was working solution, but not the best. Uh, like the next uh, step in the history, it's like indust industrial uh, age. Uh, it's year 2000 still, uh, but I have joined near at this moment. And uh, for all, like with all the tricky and uh, like sneaky way he actually uh, like can, he proposed me to do some rust. And at that moment, we have started to create uh, Indexer framework. So, like, uh, I will tell you what is Indexer framework a little bit later. But the main point I wanted to emphasize here is that after we have like built uh, Indexer, uh, it was like uh, used by Indexer full wallet, which is deprecated currently. And we were like entire two thousand, like year two thousand, we were building an Indexer for Explorer because it was. And it is uh, the biggest indexer out there, uh, at least for now. So uh, a little bit, what is indexer framework? Like uh, um, on the left, you can see uh, the like a representation of near core node. So it is a totally closed in itself like environment, which doesn't like to interact with like outside world. Uh, with any other opportunities like and uh, possibilities except JSON RPC, but we have managed to like convince it to uh, like give the data out of it, uh, and uh, like this was an indexer framework uh, we integrated there in the near core node to make it possible to read and watch for something from from there. Uh, so like next step in the history like. Uh, it's a future. It's a late uh, 2021. Uh, we like we ate enough with Indexer framework. We saw like it's like for, like oh sorry I have missed uh, the slide that I, I'm thinking like something is weird. So in, uh, during 2021st year we have used Indexer and running it, and we like we found out that it brings a lot of suffer uh, for anyone who is using it. Not because it is like a bad software by itself, but like it, because it is a complex software. And uh, like when you need indexer, it doesn't mean that you need to become a node operator and it's something you uh, have desired before running, uh, but you have no other options. So the software it brought, uh, like it was very resource consuming and very expensive. Uh, like uh, the hell of uh, syncing nodes, uh, everyone who was running, like uh, who who is currently running, uh, those know that uh, like uh, when you start the indexer and you see this like downloading headers and this percentage is like endless, the process is endless. Uh, I remember we had a call with Josh like in the uh, 2021, I guess. And uh, Josh asked, like, can you show how to create an indexer? I said, yes, of course, but like, we, we won't be able to start it because like waiting for a node to be fully synced and working, it's like a madness. And uh, like another step, like another software is uh, like, I, I'm calling it like an update 
maintenance hell uh, because every time your core is releasing a new version, you need to upgrade your indexer. Uh, otherwise, it will stuck. You will need to update it anyway and uh, go through the node syncing process uh, like again and maybe again uh, and a lot of times. So uh, in the late 2021, we decided that we need to change it somehow. We have come up with a brand new name. We decided to call it Near Lake. And we put a goal for us. Like we wanted uh, to create something that is uh, like simple to use. It requires the minimum resources. It almost requires, like it requires almost no, none or minimum maintenance. And of course, we tried to come up with the idea how to avoid the sinking hell. And we wanted to make it like a fast start, like quick start, like just like starting and you're on the go. So uh, we have created this uh, in the like early uh, 2022. Uh, we have created a lake ecosystem. We come up with the, like we came up with this. So lake ecosystem consists of two pieces. Like it is lake indexer, which is still an indexer framework. Uh, stuff uh but like a, like the end user doesn't care about it we're running lake indexers uh, by our own we're saving all the data about every block to the aws and late and we have created a lake framework which is like for the end user uh you're using a lake framework and you're getting the streams from aws uh with like with a minimum boilerplate uh so like what stuff we have achieved with the lake ecosystem like uh it costs like somehow approximately 18 bucks per month uh it uses uh, 145 megabytes of ram and it is not optimized yet so it's not the like not the minimum and it is always sync it which is like the most uh like the biggest achievement uh we've got and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I had some, yeah, I have some uh, example of the code. Yeah, uh, I hope it is, uh, you can see it. So uh, it is like, oh yeah, this one. Yeah, so uh, it is a Rust uh, example uh, using Lake, near Lake framework, uh, Rust version. I have marked the boilerplate part. You can see it like right here. And here is the logic uh, you're putting it like it's your logic of what to do with the streamer message uh and we have like a bonus a small example of uh near lake framework javascript version uh like maybe it's probably to say typescript version but nevertheless uh the same stuff i have marked only the user logic uh here so like as you can see it is the like minimum code uh and like all this code i have well, like brought as an example it is a working solutions like completely so yeah uh and uh recently we have decided that it is time and we have created a dedicated web website with the docs about indexers uh like everything indexer related uh some information about near core about your data uh, about indexers so we're going to fill it up with a lot of tutorials uh, we have already created like a video, like, I don't know, explanation of uh, how the data is flowing in, in your protocol. Uh, we have created like uh, some articles with explanations and stuff and uh, like more to come. So please uh, like visit our new indexers, uh, like share your thoughts and stuff. And I guess it's all from me. So I'm passing it to Ole and I will be your like host for like next slide please and stuff i'm not cool. sure like what is the best time to answer some questions like immediate or yeah we like... can we can we can definitely answer questions as as they come uh i don't see any that have come uh in so far just I hate one from mario saying uh congrats on a great project lake is very uh, -huh. uh needed addition to near um <clears throat> but yeah uh, p yeah please Feel free to continue to answer those questions or i'm sorry ask questions oh, oh um, we have another question during the we have a question from benji how does yeah. the speed of the lake indexer compare with running your own indexer node if i was running a node using the indexer framework versus running 
like framework. Okay, I got the question. Uh, so like, yeah, uh, there is some uh, like, I would say between indexer framework and lake, but it is not noticeable. It is like uh, just a matter of milliseconds. And that's all. Yeah, and I have a question from Mario, uh, YS3. Uh, <laughs> it's a, a tough question, actually. Like uh, we uh, we went, uh, for the first we went with, the, uh, how is it called? Uh, Kafka, with a Kafka. And uh, uh, we tried it, but we actually, our goal was to save history somewhere. And uh, like the end goal of the lake ecosystem is not to provide uh, completely decentralized uh, like uh, solution. It is uh, a, like for complete decentralized, you can use uh, indexer framework and nothing we can do to speed it up. And we wanted to empower like uh, web two developers or newcomers or someone with like not a big budget uh, with something that will allow them to get the data from the like from the blockchain as fast as possible. Uh, even a historical one. So that's why we end up with uh, the storage like S3. So I, I hope this answers the question. Yeah, one more one more thing I'd like to um, just, you know, before we move on to the next topic, uh, yeah, Frol uh, mentioned it in the comments, but also, yeah, I'd like to uh, also highlight that, yeah, before this, we needed, you know, to run a, a node or an indexer, you'd need an eight <laughs> CPU, one terabyte solid state drive, um, you know, and you would, yeah, it would take like days or weeks to sync up uh, in the beginning. And then the rough estimate was like, what, $500 a month. Um, you'd probably want to run two of them for redundancy issues. And as, you know, Bogdan uh, talked about earlier, yeah, as releases are coming out, indexers would stall, you'd have to update it, you lose a, a little bit of time. It was just, yeah, uh, not, it, it was not an optimal experience. Uh, and now going to something like this that costs very little uh, in comparison, uh, the, boy, the, the code compared to what we were doing before is so small. And it's awesome that now we have a JavaScript, the little implementation there. Um, it looks, yeah, very easy. Uh, to use and and, and super yeah super and, and, so and just to justify like uh, the the boilerplate plate code is almost the same uh, we just use another package uh, like uh, your logic can be as big as you want uh, and uh, as you can like optimize it but uh, uh, the way it gets the data like uh, Olga is currently working on the solution and she actually like I, I believe she is the happiest person because she is building on lake already and she like doesn't participate in this uh, sinking hell uh, and uh, like the most annoying thing that you can't develop indexer properly uh, with real data from testnet or mainnet on your local machine anymore like uh, the data is so huge and uh, like your machines are so like weak that they can't even sink and this is a problem uh, so and currently like if you need to stop it, just stop and go back to that block like immediately without any delays. This is like a lifesaver. That's true. I, I mean, uh, our previous version of Indexer had this uh, downloading headers uh, uh, line. You see it and you just want to die. Uh, and uh, now you can, you can test anything on mainnet, uh, on your local machine. And it's not a problem at all. You, you can just receive a box from the point of time that you want, and it just works. Uh, it's brilliant, really. Yeah, the blogging headers is, is not the, the most, like, the, yeah, the most the the killing part. After you load the headers, you, you, you when, get when you finally yeah, wait is and then download the headers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the amazing stuff. Yeah, downloading headers, one hundred percent. Yay! Downloading blocks, sixty percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one more one more question we had from Mario. Um, what's the approximate time delay between the block written to the blockchain and the event received in the message listener in uh, 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 Lake Framework? Yeah, it, it's a very interesting. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting question because it depends on what kind of data you're uh, expecting. Because like if we're talking about uh, how like uh, in comparison with Indexer Framework, like how fast you got the data in the lake. 
uh like it's uh, about like milliseconds i would say like the the most uh long delay you can get is the two seconds because we make some pauses uh, if we don't get like a new block but uh if we're talking about like real condition then we have a lot of stuff happening on near core like transaction is sent to rpc rpc is like um routing this transaction to the node uh where it belong and like wh where the account uh, belongs to and we're starting to execute it there and and so on and so forth and for all uh remind me what's the numbers you you've got uh yeah, so let, let me sum it up uh, basically there is a delight before you get the transaction into the blockchain but the question was about once the block is minted uh, how long will it take to arrive to indexer framework or lake framework so the time is actually a finalization stage. Like the, the, the longest time you wait is for block to be finalized. It takes three blocks to finalize and currently mainnet runs uh, roughly 1.3 seconds uh, per, per block production. Uh, so this means in four seconds, you will receive it on indexer framework side. And then we, we take like, a hundred millisecond to 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 go back and forth uh, through the network uh, to put it on the S3, download it on the uh, framework side. So in comparison, four seconds for a delay uh, of like finalization stage, and then just roughly a hundred millisecond to uh, get it on the lake side. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, um, I think we're I think we're good on questions. Can, oh, you would Bogdan, do you have a, something to follow up with that? No, I I wanted to say that we don't have any questions, and so we can pass the ball to Olya. Oh, one last follow up. So the difference is only hundred milliseconds between uh, Lake and running Indexer framework. I would say yeah, this this key. difference is artificial. <laughs> like we don't have real number for that. It's it's mostly like network uh, latency that we count here. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so that's on the bolt to Olga. Uh, so we discussed uh, this nice uh, near lake, and now I want to discuss with you uh, next future steps. And in order to start, uh, at first we need to discuss uh, who actually needs this indexer data uh because we want to to serve it in a structured way to, in uh, and be able to to query that uh so at first uh, our our first uh, like a client is a uh, near explorer and uh, as you all know uh, it's possible to to search there for any historical data uh, check the state of the block the account any transaction receipt anything you want uh Secondly, uh, we have uh, different wallets. Uh, our official wallets and uh, third-party wallets also, they want to show uh, all the transactions, all the stuff about NFTs, uh, the information about staking pools, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we also have uh, some third-party tools, uh, other explorers, other wallets, uh many different startups that just want to to serve the data to communicate with data to collect the data about their uh, for example smart contract uh we also have uh analysts that want to provide uh people with uh, different analytical stuff and uh, run uh heavy queries for that uh next slide please uh, so, as a result, uh, we need to run both transactional and analytical queries, and uh, they are really different ones, and it's hard to find one good solutions for both of them. And we also need to give the access to the third party tools. Uh, it means that they should have uh, the credentials to, to run the queries, and uh, they should be able to pay for this access uh because it needs to be the, so the solution need to be hosted somewhere and it's not free and we need to maintain it somehow uh, next slide please so our current solution is postgres and actually it runs uh, it runs pr pretty good uh next slide 
it solves many different uh, tasks from our side. Uh, at first, uh, relational model of Postgres suits best for us because our data is uh, highly structured uh, and uh, it's really comfortable for us to, to use all these uh, relations, tables. Uh, uh, so we use the primary keys, for many different foreign keys, unique indexes. It uh, really helps us to, to check the state. Uh, and if something uh, may go wrong, uh, we will uh, find it at the really early stage. Uh, it, it also helps us to, uh, to explain the data to, to the user. Uh, I need to say that uh, transactional queries run pretty fast, even now, when, if we, when we have uh, five, I guess in, in our biggest table, we have uh, 500 million rows. Uh, now and we still can join it, uh, query, I don't know, order by filter, and it really runs pretty fast, even in the, in the tables of such size. Uh, finally, uh, Postgres is supported really good uh, in different ORMs. Uh, we use uh, application uh, written in Rust, and it's not like a default option. And even in Rust, we have uh, at least two good ORMs that uh, support Postgres. Let's go to the next slide. But as you uh, may notice, we discussing all, all this stuff and it means that Postgres is not ideal for us. Uh, so it has some disadvantages. Uh, maybe the main one for us right now is the speed of insert statements. Uh, it's so limited and we are really close to its limit. Uh, I know how to uh, how to boost it a little bit more, and we can live with uh, with this boost for a couple of months more. But uh, it's not about living for two or three months more. We want uh, to have a sustainable solution for next uh, few years, uh, and that's why uh, it makes no sense to try to, to boost it right now. Uh, second uh, problem is that uh, now it's absolutely impossible to run analytical queries. Uh, I have a story here. Uh, when I just joined NIR, so it was uh, more than a year ago, it was a brilliant time to, to join NIR as a data engineer because uh, the biggest table was maybe 2 million of rows and it was possible to run any query that you want. So uh, it was a really funny time for me because uh, I uh, I created absolutely crazy select statements. Uh, I knew everything about the blockchain and I could run anything. And then our data started to, to grow uh, in an exponential way, I guess. So it, it was a disaster. Um, and, and after that, I needed to think how to speed up the queries. Uh, and so I need to say right now that it's just impossible to run queries that I run at that point of time. So, um, but we still need to, to, uh, to draw the charts uh, as we have, for example, at uh, statistic page uh, in the near Explorer, uh, you, you can see a small star here. So now we have a workaround. Uh, we are uh, computing. Uh, so each night we are computing uh, the statistics for, for the previous day. So it, it's just not possible to compute the statistic for the whole uh, blockchain uh, lifetime. Uh, so we need to, to, to find this workaround. Um, Another disadvantage is that we can't truly give the access to the third party tools. We also, we, we, we are giving the access, uh, but it's not super powerful machine and the connections are limited. And uh, so if you are a startup and you want to compute uh, complex queries uh, and you are ready to pay for that, uh, sorry, but we don't provide any solution right now for you. So it's just, it's, it's not possible to, to run complex query if you're a third party uh, uh, tool. Uh, finally, Postgres is really expensive for us. We are running on GCP. We have more than two terabytes of SSD. We have several replicas to, 
to maintain all this stuff with the Explorer wallets and uh, other applications. So uh, it sounds like a big problem. Next slide, please. Uh, so for, for these lines with the small stars, uh, I wanted to provide the links. Uh, so uh, our analytics calculated at the second link and the first link is uh, contains uh, shared public access, so it has uh, uh, credentials if you want to uh, to connect to our database and query some simple queries. Uh, please don't abuse it. Second slide, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so as you understood, we need to go further and find another options. Uh, and since uh, it's not an option to burn everything, uh, so it actually should solve our problems, but it may produce uh, new ones. Next slide, please. So we need to go further and find uh, other solutions with uh, try another databases, maybe other relational databases could suit us better. Maybe we need to look at columnar databases, sharded databases. We actually started to look at them. Uh, we also are thinking about map review solutions. Next slide, please. Uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to ask you, uh, ask your opinion here. Uh, so um, do you have any ideas? Uh, what do we need to look at uh, at first? Uh, maybe you know any good uh, solutions that you can suggest us because we are in a in a stage of a, of a research and we're trying anything awesome and we have and, um we just presented a poll to the audience that's currently uh in the call do we have something for those that are going to be watching this recording later so that way they can participate uh in this poll is there like a page that they can go to Yep, I'll send in a type form uh, also for, for to share later. Okay, yeah, cool, so we'll just questions. add that in the description, the video description below. That's it. Cool. So uh, this is all from my side. So I'm really interested in the results of this poll. And I can pass uh, the presentation to, I'm not sure. Tiffany. To, to Tiffany. Yep. Cool. Um, so last bit from the presentation is our roadmap for the next three months. So going off of from our objectives that we just mentioned at the beginning of the call, um, for the next three months, we're going to focus on really, you know, we already have the Rust version of the you know, like framework and we'll continue to work on improving that and also deliver the Jazz version, which I believe also um, is shared initially with the MVP. And we'll also be working on that as well as what Olga has been just pre presenting on the warehouse DB and analytics um, you know, database that fulfilled that needs for our developers and community. And the second is we want to create updated content documentation, examples, tutorials, you know, you've seen our team are, uh, you know, we have really fun people who really want to, um, you know, benefit our community with, you know, uh, to answer questions, to present really clear, simple, easy um, documentation and explanations on how to use our tools. So we will be working on improving that documentation link that was presented earlier. And the third one is provide a stable and extensible data infrastructure to support for Pagoda products. So we, uh, as Pagoda, we'll have a lot of exciting products coming along. And, you know, as a data infrastructure platform team, we'll also be supporting all of those exciting uh, initiatives going forward. Uh, next slide, please. And secondly, enable product-based decision making. Um, so we'll be hosting, uh, you know, community sessions uh, with with all you guys, um, and uh, really value this opportunity to have this direct feedback. And another one is we want to improve our project management tooling so we can, you know, share with you more and even you know further on what we have been doing and receive more, you know real-time feedback there. And we want to create a council of users for research and feedbacks to, you know, to validate our, our, our assumptions to, to let you guys to experience the, the beta and, you know, get all the, all the feedbacks from there and really improve our products. And next one, please. And the last one is, um, it's all about really maintaining and improving what we have and make sure, you know, it, 
it doesn't break and you know, make sure the uptime is up. And, um, you know, and an another one is identify gaps of data needs that has been happening. Um, so we might be missing something and we really want to know what it is and we want to design a solution with the Brilliant Minds here um, together and to improve our experience and fulfill all the data needs that you have. And that's it for the roadmaps. And I think if we go next, Was there, was there another slide? <laughs> I think there is a slide uh, on, on our uh, linking to our Stack Overflow page. So just to mention that also um, as our data platform team really hope to use Stack Overflow as our center place for you know questions and answers because we see a lot of them might be uh, very, you know, like multiple people will probably have share some similar patterns of questions and we really want to answer them. And, you know, also ultimately have this self-serve question and search and it can, you can get it real, real time, really fast, just searching by yourself. We'll always, we we'll always be happy to answer questions. So, you know, we have the Discord channels, um, our amazing DevRel team helping us with that as well. Um, but yeah, so feel free to submit any questions um, to the Stack Overflow page we have, and we are uh, really looking forward to answer them. Cool, I believe this is the end of the presentation. Now we can open it up for any kind of cool uh, questions that anybody has. So yeah, again, please feel free to drop any questions in the bottom. I see some rolling in. Uh, also, I think someone asked, a question earlier, Arvin asked something about a schema being published somewhere. Um, yeah, Boyd already uh, provided the link, but I wanted to take it live as well. Uh, they uh, linked it, uh, Olga shared during her presentation, pointing to GitHub page uh, near uh, indexer for Explorer. Uh, in the readme file, you can find the public access credentials and at the bottom the uh, readme you can see the schema representation but they also can use any db viewer uh, for postgres and it will also provide you with these nice uh, relations because we have foreign keys and setup in place so it should be more or less uh, intuitive for you but at the same time our representation is a bit more aligned and like layout makes a little bit more sense than the default Ski, like a uh, layout that uh, your DB viewer would present. Uh, so once again, near indexer for Explorer, that's the GitHub repo you want to find uh, to see that schema. Cool, awesome. Yeah. Uh, ben... We have another question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, um, about the comparison of the, like, I don't know, of the speed of JavaScript version with the Rust version of near like framework, uh, like, it's a bit early to say about like a speed, but I guess it's comparable like any other, the same tooling like in reading in JavaScript and in Rust. Like, I, uh, I, I don't know how to properly answer it. We haven't measured. Uh, I'm not like, I don't think there would be any uh, delays from the data getting uh, part of the work, but uh, it might introduce uh, like additional uh, overhead uh, on the data, like pr processing on your logic. Like, I guess, like any Rust logic, uh, you can uh, write uh, to like process and index the data will be faster in comparison with the JavaScript version. Yeah, just to add here, so JS version is, um, it is not the performance sensitive part of the story. It's more about um, consistency yep. and reliability, st stability of this whole implementation. And from our experience, Rust tools, uh, once they are written and deployed, they never cause any issues on our side. Whereas with yeah, JavaScript. But, but a lot of people prefer JavaScript, like why not? So that's why we have created it. Uh, mm -hmm. And we have another question in this regard, I guess, like about planned release date. Uh, I can't say we have a planned release date. Uh, currently, JavaScript version is under review, uh, and it might be released like this week, maybe not this week, but like next week, maybe the, the week after the next one, but like very soon, like it's soon enough. Yeah, it will be just early version, of the, like uh, early version that we want uh, to give to early adopters, just like we did with the Rust version initially. Uh, that's why. 
but we uh, want to, so our further plan is to get a, a Rust version and JS version out of the door by the end of this quarter. Um, so me, before we do this, you, you will see some pre-releases as well. Another person is asking. Other, oh. Yeah, other question. Where can we follow the discussion on what the analytics transactional X will become? So I'm not sure we have a proper place to, to discuss uh, which solution we will prefer uh, in the end. Uh, but I have uh, uh, a repo where I'm playing with the different databases. Uh, I'm also trying to think about a, a little bit new structure. So it will not be like a, a super another database uh, than we have in a near indexer for Explorer. So we have some fields renamed. We also will add some new columns there. Uh, where can I share the link to, to my repo? You could, share, you could share it in the chat here and then I can in also add it to the, um, yeah, cool. the link. And then, yeah, maybe maybe the GitHub discussions portion of that repo would be a good place to- Yes, to yes, this. it will be, I guess it will be the best place to discuss anything. And if you have any thoughts, uh, please share them. Uh, we will highly appreciate that. Uh, I guess someone has marked as answered the question. The wrong question. Yeah, the wrong question. There is another question. Are there any plans to integrate client actor for view calls and also the form interruption in ums for indexers that utilize those tools? And we passed this boat of roll. <clears throat> and Prol has. Frozen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still <laughs> processing this. Sorry, guys. Uh, integrate client actor for view calls and also from interruption and enums for indexers. That in I'm not sure what the question is. Yeah, can, can you elaborate a bit more? Yeah, can, can you elaborate or like rephrase it somehow? Because we can't understand why client actor can be used in the view calls. Like it's completely different stuff. Also, there is an anonymous uh, question. So uh, like it might be Bowen who is trolling us out, for example. Uh, well, there, there were a few other comments, questions in the, in the chat. So I'll just uh, shoot them here. So there was a question regarding su suggestion uh, regarding using S3 JSON data lake type solutions is, is a like um, solution to analytical type of queries. And that's exactly what we are exploring as well. Um, but it seems like it will suffer from um, latency over the response you get. So with any MapReduce solution, you are usually in the realm of at least several seconds in the very best case. Uh, usually it takes minutes uh, to, to get some result from scanning the whole data set. So let's say like a backup solution for now, we try to hit uh, something in the realm of seconds of delay. Uh, so the queries would take like milliseconds uh, for, for the simple ones and maybe up to tens of seconds for complex ones. That, that, that's the ideal goal. Um, okay, there is a question. Yeah, we, uh, I, I guess uh, it is an elaboration on that question about like dropping the view client actor from the lake indexer. Yes, uh, because uh, like a view client is a part of well, like from the New York work, some sort of like undocumented uh, stuff that it, it is possible to use from indexer framework, but not from Lake one. And, uh, like uh, it is intended, uh, to drop this, like, because we, we, we tried to avoid New York war as a dependency in the first place. Uh, so, um, I, I can like, I, I believe in most cases, if you need something, uh, like, um, your use case involves some sort of querying the blockchain. Uh, and uh, you don't have like a hard requirement to 
to query like your own node, uh, you can uh, freely use the uh, near JSON RPC client RS, uh, which is uh, like an API uh, for, for the JSON RPC and you get the answer. Uh, yeah, and like something about uh, interruption in ums. I, I would say we should probably read the whole question just so yeah, that way. Yeah, can, yeah, yeah I, the questions. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. so, so he, he followed up, he said, as for the uh, interruption enums, when starting Lake Indexer, you need to manually input the block height, but there is you, there used to be an option to start the indexer from interruption without having to input the height. Is that the pipeline as well? Uh, like in the pipeline, we have uh, um, a task to make it starting uh from the latest block like uh the from the index of framework it's uh the start from latest uh from interruption uh might be implemented on your side uh like um, we don't have it in the pipelines and it's actually the first time we uh, like got the request so you please like uh feel free to open the issue with uh, like this kind of request and we can consider it but i'm not sure we actually wanted to add anything uh like storage uh, additional storage to like to the near lake framework uh but it is discussable uh i really encourage you to open the issue on github and we, we can like collect uh different thoughts and with we'll like with like indexer framework you can easily now you can easily implement many of the things you could not implement with indexer framework original one um, and this particular one uh, start from interruption is very easy to implement on your side when you process your message your uh, the block after you finish processing you just Wait. store this so, block height somewhere in like on disk and then when you sorry uh interrupting you i i suggest like we can create some sort of tutorial on this regard uh okay. and put it in docs and it might be useful uh for those who want to like this feature so i guess we Very can nice. add this in pipeline yeah uh, another question is how will dynamic resharding affect the pricing of running in lake indexer as the number of shards increase will it ever become more expensive to run the lake framework versus using the indexer framework uh Yes, uh, it will uh, a little like it. It depends on the number of shards uh, uh, in the readme section of uh, cost estimation. We put a formula, and our estimations were done for the four shards. Uh, like, uh, and you can easily follow the formula and change the number of shards. And got the like numbers. We can even implement some sort of calculator. Yeah, but it will never uh, exceed the cost of running Indexer framework because for Indexer framework you would need to run a node per shard and eight eight hundred or uh, five hundred uh, USD per month is unbeatable uh, ch challenge here. And with with the with the Lake framework. It's in the realm of adding maybe five bucks per shards or something like that, in terms of like read and cost on uh, from S3. Um, one more question: Are you guys working on a dimensional model design for the near blockchain, like dimensional user, dimensional contract, and fact transfer tables? If yes, can you share your design? If no, are you aware of any Web3 dimensional modeling blog or reference material so we can make a near dimensional model ourselves? Mm. According to the polls and the silence, I guess we are not even aware of uh, what dimensional model design is. So the answer is no, we're not working. Uh, unfortunately, can't share anything because we have heard it for the first time and we really encourage you to actually like do this if you want why not like even more cool projects based on your <laughs> cool um i think we're run out of questions uh if you have any more we'll give a minute or two to um let you drop any more questions yeah and um, while you're dropping like i really want to thank you for like some ideas for tutorial and encourage everyone 
uh, to like visit our uh, GitHub repo of the near indexers docs uh, and put any requests you actually want to see as a tutorial or article uh, for the documentation because there are a lot of like topics we uh, can and want to discuss but it's really hard to like prioritize uh, and I guess we would like uh, to prioritize it based on your requests so please like don't be shy uh, post it like fire an issue yeah absolutely uh can i find the video of the presentation deck of the of this session somewhere i'd like to share with my team yeah absolutely after um this will ends uh hopefully today or tomorrow at the latest uh this will be uploaded at on youtube youtube forward slash near protocol we'll have this presentation there as well as the slides um and all the links where you can participate um yeah and again just to, to really reiterate what was just said we really want developer feedback, community feedback. You are the reason why we are building this and we want your inputs on what we should prioritize, how we should build things, where we should go. Um, so yeah, um, Arvin asks, does the data team have a Discord channel or forum to discuss scaling issues? I would say right now, um, just come to the the um, near dot chat and come to the near um, um, channel. We have a validator section uh, in there, but mainly under the engineering aspect. If you have any questions, there's like developer support post there. Um, yeah, you don't have a specific data platform team channel. Maybe if that's something that people want to have, we can talk with the team about it um, to have something specific uh, uh, to that. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to jump in there. And also we have office hours every day, twice a day. If you go to near.org uh, forward slash office dash hours, um, you can see twice a day, Debrel, um having live sessions that you can ask questions. We'll answer the best we can and uh, forward what we don't know to the smarter individuals on this call. Uh, Froll, you got something? Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to add that uh, we some, somewhat deliberately uh, avoid using chats because we found that they are not scalable. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's better to open up the conversation on our issues or discussion boards and on on GitHub, and that this way we can um, always get back into conversations regarding certain aspects later on and revisit our decisions and also uh, keep several tracks at the same time discussing analytical. Uh, data solutions versus uh, event-based ones. So yeah. Um, I guess just one comment. Thanks so much for doing this. An amazing project. Running link, uh, running Lake Indexer has saved my team so much time and money. I'm super pumped to see how this project grows. If you need any beta testers, you know where to find me. Go team. <laughs> um, Thanks, Benji. <laughs> Thanks to all our supporters. Yeah, uh, ben, ben, Benji was our our lab rat uh, for uh, <laughs> Lake Indexer. So if something might went wrong, it would be for Benji. So <laughs> awesome, cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, oh, one more. Is there a specific GitHub discussion link to the Postgres scaling issue slash discussion? Did you guys create one yet? I guess the one that we already shared. Uh, okay, you already shared. Near, it. Cool. Uh, near Lake flows into SQL base uh, issues. Cool, awesome. Uh, yeah, and and again, once we post this on YouTube, we'll make sure you have all these links uh, available for you. Um, cool. Well, we're yeah, just about out of time. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, yeah, really stoked to have these community sessions. Get this live feedback uh and engagement so yeah this meeting will take place every last thursday of the month and feel free to join us every thursday we're having community meetings uh first week is going to be dev console slash explorer second one is the protocol anything uh, NEP related or um for the core team join third week is tooling so anything developer tools come join and then the yeah, again this one is the data platform team so yeah excited to have these continuing every month uh and yeah um feel free to to let us know how we're doing give us comments suggestions we're, we we love feedback so thanks so much for joining really appreciate it thank you everyone thank you have a great rest of your day we'll, we'll see you next time yeah
Bye-bye.